good evening everyone and welcome thanks for joining us for the day third of eminent lecture series organized on the occasion of one year anniversary of pea this session is delivered by mr mani bansal on the theme a road map to skill enhancement in oil and gas industry uh, mani bansal is a is currently serving as reservoir engineer at institute of reservoir studies oil and natural gas corporation based in ahmedabad uh, he is expertise in the field of reservoir simulation primarily focused on field development strategies for distinct onshore and offshore assets of the company he is also uh, serving as membership chairperson of the ste india section and is actively involved in volunteering activities such as SCEE mentoring and ambassador lecturer program so without any further delay i would like mr mani bansal to start today's session over to you sir uh thank you chata for this uh, warm welcome uh, firstly i'd like to ask the audience uh, if anybody can confirm whether the presentation is visible to all the participants yes sir yes sir it is visible and i am uh, i am audible as well yes sir yes sir perfect that sounds really great so if anybody faces any sort of issue whether the ppt freezes in between or my network connection goes weak uh, during the presentation so please kindly let me know and accordingly we can resume back again sure sir sure sir you can start now perfect so hello everyone i am mani bansal as chata has already tell you or told you about my introduction so i am currently serving as a reservoir engineer at uh, institute of reservoir studies i am based out in india ahmedabad and uh, i am working for the biggest uh, national oil company of india which is ongc and uh, today uh, i'll walk you through the road map of skill enhancement in the oil and gas industry and i i do get a lot of times this question that uh, how do we really enhance our skill and uh, can you tell us the sources from where we should be learning it and are they the right sources to work with so the very first source that i would like to tell you guys is right there on the screen itself which is getty images and uh, this is one of the wonderful source if in case you want to make a presentation in your uh, career and uh, there is something that you would want to you know, picturize uh, on the screen so getty images is the go to point where you all the images that you see today in my presentation are taken from that place so uh, try checking this out as well uh, as and when you find time so uh, moving next i'll just quickly uh, go through my uh, career journey and how uh, really i built up my footsteps uh, in my career and how did the trajectory look like so honestly my career journey with the oil and gas industry or specifically with petroleum engineering started with uh, when i got admitted to bachelor's of petroleum engineering in iit ism dhanbad that was in the year 2013 and i really had no clue as to what sort of learning i will be getting through petroleum engineering but then i was ready to explore further and immediately when i joined uh, ism dhanbad as a petroleum engineer uh, i got surrounded with so many clubs that were working in the university and uh, obviously there was music society there was dramatics club there was maybe literacy club so there were so many clubs that uh, you can be a part of to enhance your skills and fortunately i stumbled upon the best club uh, which kind of fitted with my ideas and that was toastmasters international and the skill that i was particularly learning there was public speaking so uh, if you if you see that i am speaking so well today back in 2013 i was not really such a great speaker and i owe all my uh, journey of communication and speaking to toastmasters international so i would strongly recommend each one of you who is really wanting to learn english or somebody is facing any sort of barrier in communication so toastmasters international is the go to place and uh, the organization is a paid organization for which you kind of have to pay around 70 to 80 us dollars for 6 months but then uh, don't really see the value of uh, paying for toastmasters international as a public speaker because 
you might see the value of uh, joining it but don't you don't really realize what value you are you losing when you are not joining toastmasters international to to improve your public speaking so please try to have a look at that and uh, see how things move around i am not uh, honestly promoting toastmasters international it's just that this particular skill has helped me in my career to move ahead and i would want each one of you to also look back and see how these things are working for you moving next i i got an opportunity to work uh, with the university of nottingham malaysia campus and the reason i got this opportunity was through isec and isec is a i would say a non profitable organization that is working to carry out exchange programs for different people across the globe so i got an opportunity to be a part of isec uh, i applied for the interview and positively i qualified and i was there in malaysia for 42 days and i was primarily responsible to do volunteering service for the blind people or maybe teaching the underprivileged and i i certainly believe that this skill is really really important in your career because uh, i believe volunteering is something that is always being looked into a profile whenever you apply anywhere be it a management degree or be it for a masters degree so it kind of encapsulates what sort of qualities do you possess apart from the academic qualities that you have so you should always look out for having a volunteering opportunity uh, as much as you can or taking a social initiative in your career so that it kind of uh, builds a pace for your profile to be in a better shape so moving next so this was till my first year and uh, after that i kind of stumbled upon the actual petroleum engineering i was being taught in the uh university and mostly my focus was uh, on the fundamentals of reservoir engineering as well as petroleum engineering not just reservoir engineering i was doing drilling and production but i would strongly recommend again each one of you to just go through this book lp day which is fundamentals of reservoir engineering and it is such a wonderful book that any like if you read 10 times you will learn 10 new things every time you read so uh, it's written in a very lucid and cogent manner so try to just go through this as well if you are really interested to enhance your career in petroleum engineering because this is the go to book even uh, i am being working uh, here in the oil and gas industry and we do use this concepts that are written in the in the literature so there are other literatures as well but i would strongly recommend that this is something you should always be reading once so moving next uh, we had more like a training sort of a service where all these students were supposed to go to a field training during their career and uh, i got an opportunity to go to ongc which is uh, my parent company where i'm working right now and uh, i was mostly uh, kind of uh, given the opportunity to work with the logging services people so i was uh, doing the field evaluation and how the different logs are carried out the how the perforations have been carried out in the real field so these were the kind of things that i was acquainting myself during my uh, training and uh, immediately after uh, my second year i i got an opportunity to work as an re intern in shell bangalore and uh, i i kind of applied to shell and all of you who were really willing to uh, to kind of enhance their career with shell i would recommend that you please go to their career portal this is how i really applied and you go to the portal you see there are a lot of opportunities for uh, undergraduates as well as graduates just go there apply i don't really worry about the fact that are you even fit about applying or not uh, one should really go for one shot at least to apply for shell because it's a really great company to work with and uh, i worked there at shell for almost 3 3 months and my project was mostly related to a field in kazakhstan which is kashagan and uh, i was responsible primarily to carry out the reservoir simulation using one of the in house software of shell which is modis and uh, this is how uh, my journey with shell went on and uh, eventually after uh, after my internship so there are two ways you can enter shell one is through the the assessed internship program and the other one is you can kind of apply after you are graduated but i would always recommend that you go through the assessed internship program because as soon as you qualify the the shell program uh, assessed internship you get an opportunity to be uh, a part of the graduate assessed uh, program which is after uh, you join the company which goes for around 5 years so this is something which is really great when it comes to shell 
that uh, they they kind of train you for almost five years to to learn the skill set and to also implement that at the same time and uh, also one more reason why uh, people do ask me sir why did you really apply to shell and the reason was the uh, company had international exposure and i have always uh, been of the opinion that the more international exposure that you can bring in your profile it is always always really helpful and uh, it it's not really mandatory but then if you could kind of find that uh, anywhere across your cell if you get an opportunity so please do not uh, think twice when you get an international opportunity because you get to work with a global team so i remember when i was in shell bangalore i was working with uh, the students from massachusetts who came to india and that was really a great opportunity to work alongside with them so these kind of opportunities are really lacking when it comes to the domestic level companies and the the, the different internships that you kind of get but uh, you should always try to attempt to do that and then uh, so something went wrong with the vacancy at shell and uh, eventually the bangalore office was kind of uh, uh, kind of again transitioning to the other phase so i didn't really wait for the shell offer and then uh, i went for a campus job offer at ongc again and uh, ongc again anybody who is situated in india i would say can join ongc through two different ways one is if the company is visiting your campus and the other one is you can apply for the gate exam and uh, i i was lucky enough that i got an opportunity to not appear for gate and directly get a campus job offer so that is one way you can uh, be a part of ongc for a job uh, placement uh, also if somebody is really looking forward to having a training skill set in ongc there are certain uh, forums where you can apply for the ongc training the whole body over here the training body kind of checks your uh, resume along with the na the no protection certificate which you might receive from the the head of the department and after you you get that you would be able to land a training and work alongside with different reservoir engineers or field engineers uh, that you see up and uh, uh, so during this course of my career in the in the university i was associated with two major organizations that was sp international and pp which was earlier petrotech and now it is federation of international indian petroleum industry and uh, i i got really uh, great volunteering opportunities to to work with people we had too many guest lectures where the the people uh, from different uh, shapes of the career used to visit the campus and give us some webinars and uh, live lectures this was really helpful and uh, i do understand that due to the pandemic this is not really possible bill for the people to physically be present over there but then uh, try your best to kind of get yourself accommodated with these two societies because uh, this has really 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 helped me in my career and i will definitely show you how this has helped this has helped me uh, again then uh, probably after i landed my job offer in uh, in my final year i i thought really why not uh, i should go and advance my career uh, towards a master degree and that is when i thought of applying for my uh, gre exam and again i would always recommend all the students who are in their in their undergraduate to to appear for these exams it could be gre or gmat as early as possible because as soon as you enter into the corporate world it's it's really really difficult to to get time out of your busy schedule and then you have other responsibilities to look after so and i i really believe that once you are into that momentum of learning and uh, applying your skill set it is really a great thing that you apply for these exams as early as possible and one of the biggest benefit that you get is that these scores are valid for 5 years so uh, even if you have kind of not immediate planning of going to a masters degree or applying for a mim degree you can uh, very well appear for this exam if you have plenty of time and this will really help you uh, move ahead in your career at a faster pace so uh, alongside my masters degree uh, masters uh, gre exam i was also planning to uh, to appear for one of the student contest which is field challenge and uh, nowadays it is known as dori lake challenge and it is being sponsored by eag every year to all these students and i got an opportunity to be one of the finalists across the globe so there were six finalists who landed up in paris and i was the one to be a part and represent my country so anywhere you are situated if you are a part of eag society you get uh, as a student to participate in the field challenge 
and that is where i was learning the field challenge uh, skill set and the reason that is why i'm i kind of have bold this field challenge because uh, the skills that i was learning uh, through shell through ongc all these were implemented over here in the field challenge we were supposed to be uh, bidding on a uh, on a real life block and then kind of come up with a field development strategy and put it for the the panel of judges so um, obviously i didn't really win that competition but then it was an amazing and great opportunity uh, to be a part of the conference and also one more thing that it is completely sponsored so the only thing that as a student you really want to do is work for this competition then i kind of joined the ngc in 2017 and then uh, my company gives a lot of software skills training and uh, we call a lot of people from calgary uh, who give us the cmg training and then at the same time we do get a uh, uh, annual training for uh, slumber jay softwares it could be petrol or eclipse or intersect or depending on the the kind of project that uh, you're working on so i got equipped with the skills uh, through my company and uh, the other way there are other ways to also get equipped with these uh, software skills but then uh, the the companies uh, hire a dedicated a person who is an expert in the training and then they give us a training for almost a week and that's a practical hands on training that we get so try to get that if you are uh, able to get that a lot of companies such as cmg and uh, i would say slumber jay are sponsoring a lot of softwares to different universities so if there is any university you are situated at and if these companies are not sponsoring you guys so it's always a, a welcome sign to you guys that you should always approach these people to give you software and they give you free access of these software just because you are the students and uh, this is how you kind of get to learn these softwares and play with the the different data set that you get moving next so once i joined ongc or uh, i got an opportunity to to represent the executive body of sp india section and uh, i was representing the membership chair for sp india and currently also i am representing it so this is where i bring in my leadership skill which is really important to be demonstrated in the whole process of your uh, resume or your cv because uh, people who wherever who are kind of recruiting you or wherever you apply in a different university they are always looking for opportunities where you have kind of demonstrated this leadership skills so the prime reason why i chose to stay along with sp because of my past experiences it was really well and then uh, sp did give me a lot of leadership opportunities to work with so uh, i thought why not i really carry along with this so after uh, my leadership skill i kind of also went on to uh, during the pandemic i would say this this is done 2020 so i i was just stumbling and scrolling through the 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 internet and then there was this uh, code in place course which was specifically offered by Uh, stanford university this is not a, a paid course and also this is not a normal course which is given to all the students across the globe so i kind of applied for this course and i was uh, kind of studying as a student i would say for stanford university for two months and uh, the whole idea of attending this course was because if you see in the in the background of my career i had need no almost no skills of coding at all and i i felt that with the advent of time it's really important to have the the coding skills with yourself so uh, and the the tagline for this course was that anybody who has no knowledge about coding can join this and this is kind of appealed and attracted me to apply for this and uh, fortunately i got an opportunity to also attend this course for two months and also give a real life project that i was working on as uh, for the coding process so uh, always try to try to look for such opportunities cs 106a is also happening in 2021 but uh, obviously the deadline was in april and then now the course is no more there but uh, anybody who is going next into 2022 should always look for this course and if they are really willing to get themselves uh, taught by the real life professors of stanford university those are the people who are actually teaching computer science and engineering over there so it's it's an amazing opportunity that you can grab moving next so through sp only i was uh, doing some volunteering opportunities uh, and tagging these opportunities and then eventually i kind of ended up being a content creator in the the wayhead magazine the wayhead magazine is actually the international magazine of sp 
and the reason i kind of joined the way ahead is one i wanted to to reach out to people to convey my ideas and uh, a lot of people do write blogs and uh, different on different platforms but then uh, i thought the way ahead is uh, the best platform where almost internationally 50 editors are selected these editors are uh, publishing their work and it reaches to almost everybody who has who is associated with spe so the outreach of the the way ahead is really great and the reason again i chose next in energy is because uh, see that that is where i really really are transitioning to we are not exactly working on the conventional oil reservoirs and gas reservoirs we are wanting to to meet the requirement of energy and that is why i'm working for the next in energy domain over here and uh, with the content creator experience i kind of published a couple of articles and uh, i got more interest and then eventually i also applied to uh, one of the discussion group at harvard business review so harvard business school has a lot of online opportunities where you can work on and then uh, you can easily go to linkedin search for harvard business review search for this group this is a closed group not everybody gets an opportunity to be a part of it but then uh, you can apply you can kind of uh, express your interest to join this group and whoever is the admin of the group would kind of take you in and so that we can have a fruitful discussion with all the people out there who was who are into their management degree or maybe in the other technical domains so this is also one of the amazing opportunity that i could grab during my career and uh, this is uh, in nutshell which uh, what i have done till now and i'm really looking forward to enhance my skills uh, irrespective of the fact that Uh, i am having 10 skills or 20 skills or 25 it doesn't really matter because uh, learning is something that really never stops so one should always possess this never settle attitude because these skills are transitioning and transforming and it is really important to understand from where you can get them and uh, be be really very uh, sure about why you want to go and pursue that skill it's not just because i have done that you should also be doing that uh, not one size fits to all so i would always say that focus on a tailored approach where you customize this this skill set for yourself and see where and how you can leverage these opportunities in your career to move ahead now oh, i i see a lot of uh, places where people tell me that uh, the 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 mantra to success is you need to really plan things and you also have to execute and integrate whatever the planning that you have carried out but what one one thing that people really strongly misses out uh, during the planning stage or during the action stage or even before the planning stage so planning comes when you are really very sure as to which goal you want to move ahead with so uh, if i am let's say going on a trek and i want to understand whether which mountain i want to climb until unless i do not really decide which mountain i am going to climb i will not be able to make a plan and after i make a plan only then i can execute it and once i execute these plans in a timely manner i'll be able to achieve the success so what comes before plan is what i call as understanding where you really want to go and uh, there are different parameters which kind of decides how you really want to proceed ahead in your career and these are the four questions that you should be always asking yourself that which is the skill which is the direction that i am really wanting to go forward to why i want to go to that direction and this is where again a lot of students and professionals face a lot of problem is how can i really go there a lot of people tell me do this do that but can you tell me how you how you really proceed ahead with this and once you get into this cycle it's really important to repeat the whole process again and again to develop different skill sets so like i said it is really important to understand which which skill set you want to pick please do not pick a skill set only because the others are picking it pick it only only because it intrigues you and appeals you and interests you secondly once you have identified that which skill you want to really go forward to you really want to be very sure that you want to give your time give your money into developing that skill and how is it really going to help you in the long run so having a forecast of the longer duration is really really important in your career because that will kind of decide whether the skills that you are learning are actually aligning parallel to to your career trajectory or not so let's say i am not at all interested in data analytics but then there are other students who are doing data analytics so there is no purpose of me doing data analytics because at the end of the day i will not be able to leverage that skill because it it kind of never really intrigued me 
I kind of did that course. I kind of did that learning of skill only because others were doing it, and uh, I had no clue why and where it will help me in my career. So you should be very sure as to why a particular skill that you are picking in should be taken up in the longer run. So I have seen students to have a very short term overview of these skills that we want to land into a good job, we want to get into a great internship. That is why I'm learning that skill. so uh, i have seen during my own career during my university that there were students who were really planning to align those skills because they had a bigger plan so they were not only really thinking that we want a job placement or we want an internship they were thinking that what and how these skills will add on to me to get a goal which is way way bigger than what i really think right now so have a bigger picture of your goal think about 5 and 10 years down the line how do you how do you Uh, use that skill to improve your career, uh, to improve your career skill set, and improve your resume. I would say. And then once you have identified that, uh, okay, this is the place where I want to go. It is really important to to come up with the right resources. And that, uh, like I said, this is where most of the people, uh, even I, used to struggle as to where will I be able to find these resources. There are plethora of things. In fact, infinite things on Google, internet, everywhere. now how do i uh, how do i assess and filter those those skills and resources for myself so that i can learn these skills for uh, a longer run so this is where you need to be very very cautious about from where you are going to learn that but eventually at the same time you have to be very sure about the fact that whatever resources you are picking in those are not broken in between your journey so obviously you want to go from point a to point b but then uh, you were having a plan for a skill for a resource of point a to a dash let's say but then you had no clue how will you reach from b to c or from the other points so one should always be very sure that sure that if a goal is at point let's say c so you should be must prepared with the point a and point b both the resources and not just have an incomplete resource right in your hand before you even start so this is the approach i personally follow that you should be having the resources for the entire journey uh, where you want to reach and not just the immediate step so this is something which you should be cautious about and once you kind of follow this cycle uh, i would always request that you repeat this again and again and try to understand that uh, obviously primarily and cardinally focus on the fact that uh, why it is really important in my career mm -hmm. and from how uh, and which sources i am going to take these uh, these skills from now after after uh, you have identified this that okay uh, this is the skill uh, i want to i want to work with a lot of people do ask me which skill how do i identify that which skill i want to go with so it is really important again to understand the domain and the sector you want to work in so a lot of people say somebody who wants to go to harvard will always say i want to be more more focused in the health direction because that is where the whole the university is moving somebody wants to move to stanford so they would say i i want to go for a startup or an entrepreneurship journey in my career and if somebody is into uh, somebody's family background is in military or is into technology somebody wants to go to nasa so uh, you should have a bigger picture of why uh, uh, you want to go there at a particular point and this will really help you understand the the uh, the domain which you want to work in uh, the longer run and it is really important to understand uh, that right from the very start of your career you should be very sure that you want to work in a petroleum industry you want to work in an energy industry or you don't want to so uh, once you decipher that fact that okay fine i have made up my mind that i don't want to work with petroleum engineering and i want to go ahead with some other domain so this is how you kind of filter the 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 direction that you want to go so the very first thing on identifying which skill you want to take it is important that you identify the domain first and there are certain domains so how do you really understand which domain is going where and i would strongly recommend if you can please take a screenshot as well i would say that these are the sources the guardian new york times economist the atlantic Harvard Business Group, the Wall Street Journal. So these are the sources which are giving you the authentic information where and why and how the industry is moving. How is the domain particularly shaped the way it is shaped right now? How is the forecast uh, looking like for the different companies? So all these questions are very well answered in these forums. So please uh, always read well uh, before you choose the domain you want to work with. 
so uh, a lot of people have made an incomplete assumption that petroleum in, is not at all good because uh, the oil prices are going down the oil prices goes negative so uh, is it the right choice to make as a career or not so these these sources are news articles and different uh, forums and magazines which kind of keep on updating you with this uh, information and not just in oil and gas domain but they capture all the above domains which are mentioned uh, on the top so try to read them thoroughly this is where you get the right source to understand that okay the domain that i'm really wanting to work with is having a long sustainable life in future or not now after you have identified the domain and uh, i would again recommend go to a website which is known as glassdoor glassdoor is particularly a website that is used to rate the different companies working in different domains i am picking oil and gas companies here because i am uh, most of you are based in the oil and gas domain as of now and studying that but glassdoor gives you an idea about all the different domains as well so go to these website check what company reviews are first you identify the domain then you identify okay i am in the domain of let's say electricity so tesla is the best company to work with or let's say i am in the domain of aerospace or something like that so nasa is something which i be uh, targeting so try to filter those companies based on the the million reviews that you get on glassdoor and these are real life reviews by the people who are working in the company so you get a uh, the the direct ground the reality of how the company is whether the company is firing how is the firing rate how is the culture so all these understanding can be taken up through glassdoor so now let's say you have identified your dream company uh, it could be chevron or it could be total which is total energy now and after you have identified it is really again cardinal to understand and go to the websites that they are dealing with so go to these websites particularly the company websites that you have shortlisted see where the company is moving is it really aligning with your understanding of the industry or not are they taking the projects that kind of intrigue you or are they taking up something else so let's say they are taking up wind energy and you are like i wanted to go into solar so there is no purpose going to the company only because of the name of the company try to check the background of the company as to why the company is there and what is the company planning not in 2 years not in 3 years but we have 15 20 years down the line how do they forecast their company statistics in 2040 in 2050 that is again very important to understand now after you have understood let's say you have un uh, identified the company you want to work with you have gone through the website everything is very well done so the next thing that comes up is the job that you want to apply with so you should be very sure about the job description that uh, you will kind of get so this is kind of an example which i have taken from one of the linkedin uh, job descriptions and this is a profile uh, for i would say a uh, product uh, uh, analyst or something and uh, the reason they have kind of listed all the skills that are required by the company to be a product analyst so you can see that there are skills like power bi data visualization so the person who show, whosoever is willing to apply for the job should have an advanced knowledge in ms excel they should also have an acumen in the python languages as well so this is one way to understand what skills you really need the other thing that is really important uh, to be done at this point of time is go to linkedin search for people who are already working in this company so let's say i am working in ongc so search for all the people who are working in ongc see where are they landing what are the skills that they are adding into their profile is it matching with the jd which is job description or is it something else so once you identify and talk to these people try your best to reach out to them i'll tell you how do you really communicate with them and how you do how do you ensure that you get a perfect success of getting a response from these people so uh, a lot of people struggle in getting that so it is uh, again important to understand the jd what skills are needed and also to talk to the employees who are already working in the industry to understand where is the company heading to and what skills are they really looking from in a uh, new graduate or an experienced graduate so after you have identified that okay fine these are the skills that i want to to work with again uh, the question of why comes again that you want to understand that the geography of the company where you want to work with is it aligning with your career goals or not so let's say somebody wants to settle in us or uk or maybe new zealand or australia 
and they are looking for a job offer in south africa or maybe in dubai so they have no uh, they will not be able to uh, to kind of get all the things aligned for themselves so one should always be uh, wary about the fact that the geography of the location should also be uh, taken care when they are applying for a job not just land there because you are like why not just start a career and then we will see i would always recommend that one should only start when they are really really sure about the the geography and other parameters so the next parameter they also want to see as to why they want to go with this company is the career growth that company provides so i have seen like companies most multinational companies they give a personalized graduate training program which kind of helps a lot of companies so when when you kind of compare yourself with someone who is working in domestic company so you will see that these people who are working in the multinational company are able to get the career growth at a faster pace and the reason they could able, they are able to get that is because of the training programs that are kind of tailored made for all the employees that are working in the mnc and also the second fact which i have always been stressing is the fact that international exposure is a must for uh, for enhancing your skill set whenever and wherever you get that you should always try to to take that and after after you have kind of identified that okay fine these are the companies that give you the personalized growth you should be also wary about the fact that what is the employer brand employer brand is something which uh, you may feel it's not really important people say the recruitment team will say that it is not important but what is really important is that they do check it so if i am working in a local company or uh, i am working in a multinational obviously it creates a difference if i am having a, a car from tesla or if i am having a car from some other brand so it does really matter that uh, the brand of the employer is what so before you decide which company you want to work with again the culture also really matters so it is also important that let's say you are a, a french candidate and you are uh, speaking french but then uh, everybody in the in the company is talking some other language so you will obviously face a lot of heat in kind trying to mingle up with these people so you should understand what kind of culture the company is giving you is it giving you the the right culture to to accommodate yourself with or is it uh, just a kind of bias towards a certain category of people so you should also understand that also one more thing that you should be uh, taking care is the collaborative workplace you should always see that the place where you work has a collaborative work environment not just be there at a job because you are the only one who is working at it the reason why you go for a job is because you want to learn skills not just that you can learn from yourself but because there are skills where you can learn from the perspectives of different people that is why people really search out for a workplace that is giving you a teamwork kind of an environment and at the same time it kind of challenges you in the terms of adaptability teamwork is something not all the people can excel at but then with the advent of time once you are into the corporate world and working in a company you will be able to adapt the skills and polish yourself and understand that this is how a workplace works in a collaborative manner so it is really important to understand the integrated idea which is coming from different uh, dimensions of the prism to understand the perspective of different people and then coming up with a beautiful and unique idea for your project it is not that you are the only one and you are the jack of all trades who will be able to get the answer you need people to help you out with finding the best solution now after you have identified these company it is also important to see the return on investment obviously there is a lot of time and money that goes hand in hand to uh, to whatever skill set that you want to achieve so one should also be very sure about what time frame you have to learn that skill is it just two months or is it six months or is it like one year you have to prepare that skill so if you are seeing that uh, whatever the skill that you are learning is the best thing that can be done in the given time frame and given in the monetary value if you have to pay for that so you have to combine both these things because the investment goes every second you are investing your time in learning that skill so you should also be able to understand that the skill you are investing in is it worthy enough for the given time frame or not so i will not want to build a building in one month because i know it will take a lot of time so if i go by that process and just go and uh, and chase the process of earning different certificates i would lose out the purpose of learning that skill 
so one should always understand that whatever time frame that you have you should be able to learn that skill in an optimum manner and also identify the trade offs that comes along with the the learning uh, skill a over skill b there is a strong possibility that you might have a predilection for both these skills a and b but then within the given time frame a certain skill might fit well and the other one might not also like i always say plan ahead of time when i say plan ahead of time you should always be planning not just for the next year you should be planning for next 2 5 10 years this is how you see your career trajectory this is how and where you want to land don't focus on the fact that where you are now i i can also think that i want to work with nasa but then uh, don't be uh, demotivated by the fact that how can you as a person work with nasa because i have seen a lot of my my close friends and colleagues who have reached at different positions who those of whom were working alongside me so uh, it is all the effort that you put in that matters and not the the end goal that you are really chasing so you can chase a bigger goal that's not a problem you can also chase that i want to work in amazon or tesla or any other company so be be have have a great picture in your mind plan ahead of time now uh, lastly a lot of people like i said struggle here sir can you tell me how do we uh, how do we build these skills for ourselves we understand that we want to learn data analytics we understand we want to learn machine learning but i am i am always confused with the fact that i am going to google there is somebody posting this is uh, this company is giving us uh, this webinar somebody is teaching us some internship so how do we pick the right resources for ourselves so like i said before even the planning stage it is also important that the planning has to be made with all the resources in mind that will be used throughout the career trajectory and journey and not just as a starting point so the very first thing uh, that you do is not to follow me the follow me is for the things that i'll be showing on the screen so follow these things so the first thing that you want to be very sure about is follow specifically or for oil and gas industry so follow these youtube channels so youtube channels are a great forum for a lot of people to disseminate their technical know how and share it with all the different community who are working in the oil and gas industry so ihs market reservoir top dog engineer is again the best source you can get if you are really wanting to learn skills in terms of excel so if this person gives you a demonstrated exercises right in front of you you can do that and excel is something which everybody has you don't really require a software for this so try to learn these oil and gas skills through excel uh, through top dog engineer geo stats guy again is an amazing forum to to learn the the different uh, data analytics and uh, machine learning things and this person is one of the professor of ut austin i forgot his name maybe uh, is john uh, foster i think so these uh, these people are giving free lectures they are not giving you they are not taking anything from you the only target for this come these persons are to disseminate the knowledge so that it reaches out to the right people at the right time moving next is uh, cmg modeling cmg computer modeling group is again a great channel that you can follow will give you uh, a lot of trainings on cmg it will show you how you can work with the cmg software so let's say you have a cmg software at your campus so you can very well go through this website uh, through this youtube channel and see the recorded videos it is completely free you don't have to pay even a penny for this so you can follow that khan academy is again for somebody who wants to go with coding data analytics machine learning these are all sources that are targeted only for the oil and gas industry now there is a channel with by a few people akshar shrivastava kori shafer and krishnai kori shafer is actually giving you a lot of sources based on how you can start off with python so somebody who is really new to the coding uh, coding direction and they want to transition into the coding direction of oil and gas so follow this youtube channel kori shafer Akshat Srivastava tells you a lot more about the the management and the return on investment of your skills. So how do you really work around with your skills? What is the best way you can learn them uh, in terms of managing your time in terms of managing your finances? So he he deals more on the side of managing the skills uh, in a nutshell. Then you have Krish Nayak again giving uh, a lot of videos on oil and gas PG three two M reservoir is again one of the great uh, place where 
uh, a professor of maybe Texas A&M. He is giving uh, the videos for oil and gas. Then Fanarco Net is again one of the channel by uh, the SP International President, which is Tom Blasingame, and it is again uh, Fanarco Net is free for all the all the people. It is publicly available. Anybody and everybody can view these videos and learn from them. Then goes the uh, PVTN flow course uh, by Tamu SPE. So there are different uh, channels that you should be following. And these are the best sources which I could kind of gather and come up here with you so that you directly get channelized and can start your energy and channelize it in the right direction from the very first day rather than trying to uh, filter out what sources are the best that would work for you. Moving next is the LinkedIn pages. So these are really, really important to understand why LinkedIn pages are important. So uh, obviously I have given you a limited set of sources that you can work with and uh, which are the best according to me. But then you should also be having a sustainable skill income uh, input for your career. So let's say uh, I am giving you this skill, but then there must be some additional skill that would come with time. And there are certain pages that keep on demonstrating and adding those skills on their respective forums. And it is really important to like these pages. So more you are surrounded with the right people, the right resources, the more you will be directed to work towards the right way. So Petroleum Engineering Association, which obviously I'm giving a lecture at, Stanford Earth, Machine Learning Plus, Datum, Petronas, all the oil and gas companies, all the oil and gas universities, where you can possibly see your career, have a LinkedIn page. They give so many free resources. They give so many knowledge right out there, which can be leveraged at any time. You don't really have to pay anything at all. So please and please follow these LinkedIn pages that will help you enhance the skills that are required. So I cannot really tell you what skills you would want because individually each one of you might have a different skill set. But I have given you a past trajectory as to how you can understand as which skill is really important to you. So a skill A might be important for me, but the skill A might not be important for the other person. So it is also important to understand that the skill you are looking forward to are coming from these resources. These are genuine and known resources. Toastmasters International, like I said, is one of the public speaking organization. And I would always, again, stress on the fact that communication is the key. If you are really lacking in, in speaking in English or maybe other language, I would always recommend that you should go uh, for such platforms and learn these skills as early as possible. Because even if you might have the technical know-how, all the technical knowledge that you need for enhancing your career, but unfortunately, if you are not able to portray that and showcase that and convey that message right over the table, then there is no purpose of learning this. You might be uh, knowing everything about Mars, but then if you cannot really pen that down, if you cannot really convey it to me, there is no purpose of having those skills right away. So uh, communication is again, uh, and Toastmasters International has honestly helped me. Today, I, I think the reason why I'm able to uh, communicate with you guys, I owe all that credit to Toastmasters International. So please go through these sources and uh, try to learn that. Then also follow a certain people and community uh, in the oil and gas industry. You need to, uh, so I am not really promoting these people at all. These people have not paid me even a single penny to promote themselves. These are something which I in person have found to be really helpful for all the oil and gas industry community. So uh, try to follow these people on LinkedIn. All the names are written over there. Some of them are professors. Some of them are uh, students just like you, or some of them are recently graduate students. So try to try to follow these people, get in touch with them, try to understand where they are heading their career at. And this will help you also uh, kind of mold and shape the career which you are really looking forward to. Follow community channels such as GitHub. Now GitHub is again one of the uh, best source to learn different codes. And if you want to understand what is the code meaning, how is the code really written, Stack Overflow at the bottom is the best place to understand. Stack Overflow is a place where you kind of get so many sources uh, online where people are asking, oh, can you tell me how do you use Matplotlib? Can you tell me how do you use Pandas? So when you get these questions, all these questions were already asked by somebody, somebody like you on Stack Overflow. 
so try to go there and see all the answers that are written down there this is how you understand the given code and also follow the other channels which are written here after you follow the uh, people and community i would say follow the different websites which is really really important to uh, to enhance your resources spe.org is one of the great website i can always recommend pe associations is definitely one spe.org can help all the student community especially to learn and communicate with different industry professionals that are based out globally so please uh, if you are a student member please uh, join that uh, organization it is completely free of cost you don't have to pay anything and thanks to chevron for sponsoring all the student memberships on sp.org so please follow that coming next is coursera.org where you find andrew ng he was the the god of data analytics and machine learning and try to complete the courses by andrew ng specifically if you are really looking forward to enhance your career in in data analytics cmgl.ca is again uh, giving you free free uh, certificates free courses for learning the different softwares i have seen cmg also provides you the licenses to install your software on the desktop and also learn from the licenses so you can have a kind of hands on exercise with the cmg moving ahead uh, the source how do you understand whether where is the oil and gas industry is moving is the uh, the way ahead magazine which i am a part of so go to the jpt magazine sp magazine and see or uh, there are different people writing on different forums and all these people are only and only related to the oil and gas industry so that is what comes out as an opinion from all of them so go and read all of this code in place like i already said which i uh, kind of applied in april 2020 which was cs 106a i would recommend each one of you is wanting to enhance their career in coding can definitely be a part of this all you have to do is just answer a couple of questions apply there there is no fee nothing at all this is a community service that is provided by stanford for two months then there are other sources like analytics with the ihs market i'll not really go with all of this medium.com is again a very important source where you can find uh, editorials from different people so people like me people like you are writing their content and you can read that and understand what the people are feeling about the industry so medium.com is again one great source where you can understand landmark solutions learning is again the best source by halley burton and they kind of give uh, this to all these students free of cost you get to enroll yourself into a course you get to do an internship you get to do uh, get a certificate as well so follow this as well now after you have kind of learned all these skills a lot of people ask me i have learned i have done all these skills i have a certificate now what else i can possibly do what are the company really looking forward to so what they are really looking forward to is that you have learned this skill fine now after you have learned it it is really important to also implement the skills and also apply them in real life field and the way you can apply that is through enrolling yourself to different competitions and all the competitions which are written on the right hand side at the bottom are completely free of cost you can uh, pen down whatever you want you can apply things you can learn lorry day challenge like i said was the field challenge where i was a part of in paris in 2017 so you can also be a part of it all you have to do is just try to understand what the competition is all about in siat global energy day is coming i guess on 16th of june itself this year 2021 there are great uh, energy uh, webinars that are going to happen try to understand what is happening globally across the uh, the globe shell hackathon snyder green energy evolve is again a great challenge by seg then uh, iptc is another conference that sp keeps on offering and iptc gives you a great platform to students where they invite students free of cost so they give you visa they give you conference registration they uh, they invite students to be a part of it and all the cost that is bared right from your travel to stay to fooding and lodging everything is paid by the iptc community so try to also get yourself uh, equipped with that uh, kind of setup where you can be a part of different conferences for as a student then uh, huii initiative conference is again a great uh, conference that is organized in india uh, you must also be having some other uh, us initiative uh, somewhere else in different countries 
so please go and check that as well on the internet where you can be a part of this conference the reason of these uh, being a part of this conference will kind of help you network more and more with different people understand the different perspectives that you can see finally which a lot of people look forward to is uh, the internships where you get paid where you can actually apply that in real life field mytex global link is the biggest and best platform which i have seen to provide international internships to students free of cost again they give you an association with one of the university in canada all the cost are been borne by mytex global link you have to not do anything at all all you have to do is apply and answer few questions which are being asked to you why is dart scholarship again is for germany you can go to germany and get asso yourself associated with a university so i guess because of the pandemic these things are now nowadays working as a, more of an offline online thing but then it is really a great opportunity i have always mentioned and stressed upon the fact that international exposure is something which you should always look at charpak is again for people who are based out in france and not also people who are based in france for outside as well they can apply all these students in the oil and gas industry can apply that utp malaysia university technology petronas is again i have seen a lot of students in my own university applying to utp for an internship and uh, i have seen also students getting selected for these internships and working on a real life field on a real life project IRS Ahmedabad is a place where I am working at. Uh, anybody who has any queries or is looking or is in India and is wanting to have an oil and gas internship at IRS, which is Institute of Reservoir Studies, please ping me uh, whenever you find time. I will try my best to get yourself accommodated or maybe kind of uh, put this forward to the right people. Then, moving ahead is the semester at sea. This is something which a lot of people you must not have heard about. so semester at sea is one of semester or almost 6 months you get to spend on a boat on a ship where you can do your internship free of cost again you get paid and sponsored for this then sn bo scholarship iusstf is india us uh, some funding thing and uh, search scholar student energy is again a great platform where you can go and uh, uh, get to volunteer and serve as an intern for different different student communities who are working in the oil and gas industry aws machine learning sp is something which a lot of people in amazon have really started doing with so sp stands for the scholarship program so aws has come up with a machine learning scholarship program and i think the deadline for this is 38 june 2021 so you still have like 15 20 16 days to to finish your process or of enrolling into this uh, internship and you get an opportunity free of cost to to be a part of this global community anybody who wants to take a screenshot please uh, take this screenshot because i'll be just quickly changing the slide i'll give you 5 seconds to do that 1 2 3 4 five we are done so uh, a quick tip uh, towards the end of my complete session i would like to give all of you guys the first thing is as i already mentioned please get yourself enrolled with sp.org you will get plethora of opportunities just like me i was one of the student like just like you when i was in university and sp has helped me a lot to enhance my career and skills so please follow that use linkedin wisely and smartly so now i have seen a lot of people doing that so a lot what a lot of people do is if i want to let's say get connected with uh, the the founder of pa let's say nikhil agrawal and i want to get to know what he is thinking about the current industry what is happening so what i will do is i'll search that person on linkedin i'll quickly see that okay there is an option called connect i'll click on it and okay boom the request is being sent now what is wrong in this approach is the person to whom you are sending has no clue who you are apart from the profile that you have written there but uh, i would always recommend that you should always send a personalized invite so let's say i wanted to uh, so jim crompton gave a beautiful lecture a couple of days back and now i want to send a uh, invitation to him so when i click on the connect on linkedin i will get an opportunity it will ask me do you want to add a note uh, to the uh, to the invite that you are sending so i would always recommend that you please add a note 
so that the other person understands why you are reaching out to them so if somebody is reaching out to me and saying just sending a request i will have no clue why the person is reaching out to me you will always want to send a request where you mention that i am belonging to so and so university i am situated in this and this country and i am looking forward to connect to you because i want this now it could be anything it could be getting more knowledge about the research paper that the author has published or maybe getting or landing into an internship opportunity through them or asking about the different research projects that you can pursue but at least give them some knowledge as to why you are wanting to connect to them so this is one really smart thing that a lot of people should do and i personally follow that whenever i want to connect with someone who i don't know i always write a personalized invite and telling them why i want to really connect with them and this has always landed a reply back to me and the person has connected back so please follow this approach then comes you have to replicate the work projects done by different users so a lot of people ask me that uh, what is the sense of replicating a work so if i go on github there is a code that is written if i understand the code then what now a lot of people don't even do do that so replication of work will kind of help you to understand the the logics behind the work that was being carried out and you can also by replicating the work of somebody you will understand the concepts and even if you are not able to understand the concepts you will be able to ask them through the forum itself that we have went through your work but then there is something which we feel is maybe we are perplexed and confused about the fact as to what should be done next or how did you really come up with this particular approach why did you pursue that approach so until and unless you don't really delve and dive into the work that is done by the the person you will not be able to ask these questions directly to them so i would always recommend that replicate the work all the videos that i was uh, asking you to subscribe to the channels they have great work which is being carried out by them you can replicate that and learn learning is really important just watching videos and theoretically studying things will not land you a great place in your life so implementing and applying these skills is really really important now a lot of people are confused about career in oil and gas i would uh, strongly recommend again not just read my article this is an article which i have written in uh, september 2020 as to what you should be doing should you be pursuing your masters should be uh, you should be going to a phd or you should directly go to an oil and gas company what exactly should uh, an individual be doing so uh, this is very very beautifully penned down by me and my team so if you find time please go through this article as well learn and implement like i already said certificates will only and only help you to learn what is being taught but then the application has to be uh, also learned by you if you are just focusing on the learning aspect of skill but not really implementing it companies are not really interested in you companies are interested in you only because you have learned a certain skill you have implemented that and also you are demonstrating and kind of enhancing to the next level by learning that skill so they are more interested in the career trajectory that you traverse in learning a skill and not just that you have learned a skill they will be more interested in seeing how you corroborate that can you tell me how and where you have implemented it this is something the company is asked so by just uh, watching videos and reading theory it will not help you so please follow the approach of learn and implement lastly do not end up in a job to convince others you have a job so a lot of people i have seen students specifically focused on the fact that we want a job because we want money we want this but then i would strongly recommend that this is a secondary thing uh, you are very early in your career the whole thing you which should be really important to you right now is the addition of skill set as much as you can if you are not able to add the skills in your career ending up in a job which is definitely not the right job for you and you are there only because you wanted to convince your family you wanted to convince your friends that even you can land a job offer please don't do that habit follow the approach of adding skills and landing the best job at the very start of your career don't just land into a job because you want to start uh, i would always recommend that you start only when you are really ready even if you are like 25 30 or whatever age 
communication is an added advantage like i said communication will always and always help you to to understand what you can possibly do so communication is an added advantage you will be able to convey that so the only way i feel you can improve at communication is by reading and read as much as you can as i have already mentioned at the very start of my ppt that you will have plethora of sources different articles magazine newspapers follow that read that understand that only that will help you improve on your communication but yes practicing the the skills are also important like i said learn but also implement that so you are learning the reading skills but then implementing comes with when you speak and talk with people around you and i believe toastmasters is a great platform that will give you that opportunity lastly talk to people to check progress so let's say i am into the career journey of enhancing my skill but then i am not really sure whether the skill that i am pursuing is the right skill to be pursued or not so what i will do is i will just uh, talk to people talk to people who have really recommended that to me ask them have you should always have a checkpoint in your career this is what we also have in our projects when we work so when we are working on a project we always keep a checkpoint whether the project that we are working on is it uh, right on time is it the right thing that we are doing because there there are times when we land up in a completely new project but then it is already important to understand whether the check progress is being done by all the team members or not whether all of them are on the same page of the book or not so it is really important to have a check progress with whosoever you are communicating with whosoever is advising you as a mentor so please please do that uh, as and when possible ask from people as much as you can but do not really ask from or keep on asking from people only have a limited set of understanding about people who is really wanting to help you and then ask only those set of people if you ask like million people out people out there you will get million different answers and then at the end of the day you will waste the entire time in talking to people and not really learning and implementing that skill so talk to people but then you should also be smart and very like i said linkedin should be used wisely and smartly so you should also talk to people wisely and smartly and why you want to do that you should be able to demonstrate that when you send an invite so yeah that's all from my side and uh, i'm really thankful to pea for giving me this opportunity to to share my knowledge of skill set and i hope all of you must have gained some